Coming up, highly rated recruit, $13 million in the Gator Collective. The story about the business of college sports and how NIL, collectives, and all of this has gotten to be one gigantic tricky mess. One big thing. One big thing. Let's begin with this, as it's important for the parties involved to hear me clearly, because college football folks can get real sensitive. The Jaden Rashada Florida breakdown slash breakup is not an indictment of them, the program, or the player. It just illustrates how complicated the landscape now is. On Wednesday, the top 50 four-star slash five-star quarterback from California officially asked for a release from his letter of intent with the Gators. It had been rumored that this was coming, and now it's here. Rashada had given a verbal commitment back to Miami in June. To put it in recruiting terms, he flipped to Florida in the fall. Gator fans were sour when he committed to the Canes. They complained it was just the NIL money that landed him. Then Canes fans rolled their eyes when he chose the Gators over a presumed bigger offer. And that's where it gets very, very tricky. At this point in the story, if it interests you, I would direct you to find the athletic column written by G. Allen Taylor last week, which spells out in specific detail all the people involved in the timeline of how we got here. The essence of it speaks to where college football and college basketball now are, and it's why everyone in college athletics calls the current climate the wild, wild west. Start with the Gator Collective. What is that? Well, from their website, and I quote, Gator Collective is a fan club that connects athletes and fans while allowing athletes to earn compensation for their name, image, and likeness. The banner on the homepage touts unprecedented athlete access, and that is at the root of any of these insanely passionate programs. You mean I get to hang out with my favorite player in a capacity plausibly described as community service and I get to give them money and they get to keep it? Well, sign me up. Is anybody policing this? Not really. Great. How much do we need? In the case of Rashada, the low, low price of $13 million. Come again? Yep. That was the number which was apparently agreed upon, but per the timeline in Taylor's article, the collective sought to terminate that contract in early December. The hows and whys of that remain a point of contention. Now it's important to understand the collectives here, and at all the schools as I understand it, are not run by the university. They got nothing to do with it. But let's be adults here. The coaches at all these universities obviously know how much money they have to work with and how much they need to get the difference-making players. What's also important to understand is a common denominator among many of the biggest boosters out there is massive egos, which is the cost of doing business. You got to deal with them because you need their money. Now, some schools have more than one funder collective. Do each of them know what the other is doing? Do they work together? I have no idea. Do the teams know? Well, the programs are not officially aligned with them, but again, they need them to get the players for the programs. And then when it all crumbles, as is now happening to Florida and Billy Napier, well, then what? Well, then everyone is mad at everyone. Gator fans are sideways. They need a quarterback in this recruiting class. There are suggestions the Rashadas could sue the Gator Collective as they are now back out on the market, which is not ideal, as he was supposed to be enrolled at Florida by now. And I cannot think that you're going to get $13 million anywhere at this late hour. Now, if any of this or all of this troubles you, you got to just understand that the business that used to go on in the dark back out behind the store by the loading dock. Now it's just out there in broad daylight on the sidewalk for all the world to see. And it's all legal. You just have to make sure that your university, your program, and your collective are aligned. And that's the big buzzword in college athletics these days, alignment. And it is proving trickier than it might have been thought to be.